Thank you very much for inviting me to this stimulating environment where we have a lot of different fields which are coming uh, together and on a kind of similar topic, perhaps from the different aspects. And uh, today I would like to talk about the uh, knots in the more nematic system, so it's a simpler system compared to the smectics, what we heard just recently. Uh, but there are also possible complex structures, which I would like to show some of them. And it's a kind of overview of the work which was going on now for like five, six years in this field. And uh, now most of the work on this uh, simulation side was done uh, from my colleague, younger colleagues, <coughs> like Simeon Chopper, Tine Porenta, Micha Raunik, and David Sech. They all have been my former students. <coughs> and now it's very important that a lot of this work is tightly connected with the uh, uh, experimental results efforts, uh, particularly from the group of uh, Mushevich in Ljubljana and partially also by a group of Ivan Smaljuk in Boulder. Uh, so uh, without experimental support uh, from one side, I think uh, this modeling, which I will present, uh, would stay in some kind of in the air. But now with uh, experiments which show that some of the things really work, uh, things have been uh, supported in some way. Now, uh, to uh, say a little about the broadness of this uh, complexity of structures in even nematic or cholesteric systems, uh, which are uh, here just as a few examples, so these are kind of knots in the planar system of colloidal particles in a nematic, that's a kind of Hoffian structure, which was uh, also, Patty Garrett, who is here strongly involved in this. And then uh, uh, there is also a knotted uh, colloidal particle, and then magnetic uh, colloidal particles, then cholesteric shells. These are thin layers of cholesteric in, of a spherical shape. Then uh, blue phases uh, confined by the presence of polymeric network and then uh, topologically interesting structures on surfaces which induce defects, and then here are defects on the uh, simple uh, spherical drops but penetrated by a fiber. So these are just examples, but in all together, all of this uh, uh, area is a kind of topological soft matter which we try to use for the characterizing the systems where we have uh, defects in the orientational order which are stable, stabilized by uh, external uh, effects like uh, external fields or confinements and uh, on the other side by chirality of the system if it's present. And uh, the just nematics in these conditions uh, or chiral nematic are very nice examples of this uh, topological area in soft matter. So here are just some examples like liquid crystalline blue phases, a uh, very known case, and then confined liquid crystals in tiny drops, and then colloidal liquid crystals, and this, the last one, will be mostly the topic of my talk. So first I will go through a little of the modeling. Also we heard a little uh, already from Randy, so I can do this, some of this even uh, faster. Then uh, I will shift to these uh, colloidal systems, in particular to the disclination entanglement there, which is then leading towards systems where knots and links uh, in these nematic braids are possible. And then also more complex uh, colloidal particles, which are itself uh, knots, uh, will be interested. While the last topic, which is a kind of inverse geometry of cholesteric drops, uh, will be presented on Friday by Simon Chopper. 
So if I go to this, uh, our basic pneumatic system, which is probably known to everybody here, is a system of uh, fluids where you have uh, molecules of elongated shape, which uh, spontaneously in certain temperature range exhibit the pneumatic phase. Or if they are chiral, exhibit the cholesteric phase. And so this is a kind of schematic presentation of such a, a, a molecule and also then schematic presentation of our pneumatic and of cholesteric. And for this pneumatic, what's very important, this orientational order is characterized by a director, which is not a real vector because we have both, uh, there is no polarity present, so that means that up down is the same. So in some way, beside the usual description by uh, using just a vector and then the degree of order by the scale-up order parameter uh, is better complemented by a kind of tensorial approach where we have the tensor uh, where the, this direction is no problem because we are talking only about the axis uh, of this frame of the tensor. And then we have degree of order, and then also by axiality, the order locally is not uh, uh, symmetric around the principal director. Uh, that's important probably in the defects or close to surfaces. So these things are uh, a kind of base for the simple description. Uh, which we will use later. And perhaps it's important to stress that confinement uh, in the system is bringing a coupling with this uh, interface, uh, which is usually an energetic question and also a question of direction, what the molecules do on the surfaces, and this is important for the further. And then in the pneumatic, what one observes also, we have seen before some pictures, uh, these deformations are something what occur very easy, particularly uh, long scale deformations where on the uh, several micron scale or even larger scale, they are very cheap and they are thermally excited, so visible a lot. Uh, while uh, the formations where you have really variation on the more molecular scale, uh, where order parameter and axiality changes are more localized, and these are uh, in principle in the areas of defects. Now we have seen also before this uh, uh, descriptions of elasticity of the smectics. Here it's very important that we have uh, the formations of the director field which are like splay twist and bend, which are the basic type of the formations, and then uh, and with each en enters in the energetic considerations. And on the other side is a coupling with surface where it's important at what angle director is coming toward the surface, uh, and usually it's taken as a kind of contact interaction. Then one should add also external features and so on. Uh, but uh, as we heard before, there are defects in the systems, and uh, the, we call these topological defects, and if they are point defects, uh, uh, which are, for instance, like this uh, hedgehog here, or hyperbolic hedgehog, one can define uh, topological charge, and so on. But for us will be perhaps more important defects which are lines, so line defects which can then form these more complex things as we are, uh, our aim are, are links or knots. And line defect uh, here perhaps should be stressed is characterized by the winding number before in the cross section it's like this 2D defect which Randy was introducing. And uh, this line, for instance, uh, the basic one have this winding number one half, means that the uh, director turns 480 degrees going around. And what's typical, this is typical for the pneumatic order, which, as I said, is not vectorial. And uh, it's different from what we are used from electrical systems or magnetic systems. And so these one half lines and are also energetically the lowest, so they appear the most. But then the other side, for instance, the higher lines where the director turns more like for 360 degrees, 
are uh, observed that they are not stable. In fact, they are too costly, energetically too costly. So uh, it happens that in the central part, the director turns out of, in the third dimension, like here or here, and then it becomes non-singular. Now, uh, for us, it's important that when we will have some results to treat or to demonstrate, then what will be how to present these situations. And uh, uh, therefore, we uh, cannot use always director field, like here, this cross section, particularly if you want to show something in three dimensions, it's not uh, very easy to use just director fields. So therefore, for instance, if we have a defect line, we use many times simply a, a kind of tube, which is characterized by an isosurface where other parameters have some prescribed value. Usually, this thing is uh, uh, going around the core of our defect. So that's, for instance, one of the presentations. But the other thing is that uh, one should be uh, considering uh, here is the dis, uh, disclination line. This, here is an example of this minus one half line. It uh, does have some detailed structure in the threefold symmetry. So we have here this band deformation and this play deformation in different areas. And for instance, using colors, one can show this play and band deformations, which exhibit a threefold symmetry. So the disclination line is like a general ribbon. Which, will, which is important later on when we want to make links or knots out of this. Uh, uh, and the measure for this is, for instance, some derivative here, second derivatives used to measure this. Now, uh, there are also uh, ways how people observe them, and the simplest are this which we heard before, polarization, optical microscopy, and we have here these cross-sections which Randy have shown as well. But now there are many more other more fancy techniques uh, which can reconstruct the director field in a more uh, uh, in the space in three dimensions. So one thing which perhaps should be mentioned are these uh, uh, Bontriagin tom surfaces, which are simply a kind of extension of these brushes here. Uh, to the systems where, for instance, director has more complex structure. And uh, this surface is usually constructed in this way, that you choose a certain direction, usually symmetry direction of your structure, and then you go perpendicular to this, uh, uh, to this axis and observe where director is laying in this kind of surface. And by colors, for instance, here you then tell in which uh, direction in the plane is the director. For a simple droplet, for instance, which have this so called uh, uh, this kind of structure, the director is here perpendicular to the surface, but here a disclination ring runs around. So from the top looks like here, it's here mostly up, and here is planar. And then if you construct such a surface, then you get something like that, and colors are simply illustrated where the director is. And these uh, illustrations, particularly from uh, Randy's group, have been used, uh, uh, introduced more in the field, and it's uh, really coupled very well with new techniques and can be of uh, use uh, often. So uh, perhaps the base of our uh, simulations, which we, I will show later, are in fact that we use phenomenological approach, where we, have, we for the base have a, a Landau type of expansion of the free energy in order parameter. So in such a way that you construct the lowest invariance out of the products of order parameter tensorial part. And then also gradients. So gradients, again, coupled in such a way that you have uh, invariance. And then in the simplest description, one have just uh, one constant here. We say one elastic constant and then this term here. But if system is chiral, you need to have this breaking symmetry term. For instance, we were inverse pitch of our system is hidden here. 
So that's the usual thing also as a kind of Lifshitz turn norm from other fields. And then coupling on surface is a quadratic type, so uh, just coupling the order parameter with the some preferred value by the surface, and then one can introduce fields. Usually it's a dielectric coupling, what's relevant, and this one, uh, that's the whole system which is probably enough for most of the simple descriptions. And one looks for the minima of this free energy of such a system uh, by a numerical procedure, which here I will just skip these details. And then uh, we go to examples. So the uh, colloidal system where we will go and look for our knotted uh, braids, uh, pneumatic braids, uh, first, one should understand when that one a simple colloidal particle can do in an emetic environment. So a, a particle which have a homotropic boundary conditions, so somehow uh, preferring perpendicular orientation on the surface produces, for instance, in the bulk something what's a kind of radial director field around. But when it's confined to a thinner layer, which is usually in experiments, this thinner layer means, uh, in general, homogeneous uh, far field of the director, then you get uh, two known structures like this Saturn ring defect here or a point defect here accompanying the the, and all this uh, is satisfying the, the topological condition that in general environment uh, to charge topological ch charge uh, should be zero. So that means uh, particle together with the defects, uh, either this or this, are uh, uh, really uh, yielding a uh, topological charge zero. Uh, perhaps the, it should be mentioned that there are also planar anchoring where defects also appear, like here you have two surface defects. And, but this one uh, is uh, coming uh, as a more less interesting case because defects, this doesn't stimulate creation of disclination lines. There are mostly point defects accompanying this and then the variety of structures is uh, weaker, uh, smaller. So, uh, for instance, here are this now uh, with the simulation showing these two structures which I mentioned. And in the micron size for typical thermotropic liquid crystals, both have very similar energy. So they appear both in experimental situations. Now, depending uh, to some extent also how thin is a layer of a nematic where they can find this. But this, uh, this structure, these uh, structures or uh, colloidal structures of the particular particles interact together effectively by the uh, by uh, attra being attractive or repulsive, depending how they come together. And uh, the uh, source of this attraction is the minimization of the free energy of the distortion. So if you you put these so-called dipoles. Looks uh, far field looks similar to somehow uh, dipole. Uh, they come together in this way, and they uh, at certain distance they are or they have optimum energy. And the similar thing is here, where while symmetry of the field is globally more is quadrupolar type. So, so often is this called quadrupolar defect, dipolar defect. And uh, interesting in that you can form chains out of this in a two, 2D. So in lattices, for instance, a few years, like now 10 years ago, there was a first experimental proof how one can construct these lattices of such such or such particles, so both can uh, make this. And what's more interesting that this can be done also in 3D, although it's much more demanding because this interaction in 3D uh, is not helping too much to, to self-assemble, while this one self-assemble to a large extent. So that means that this is a situation with both kinds of defects, you get this thing. But what is then further more interesting to uh, how one can create more complex braid. That's uh, again a, 
a story which is uh, known for quite some years. So if you bring two such quadrupolar particles together, then the disclinations are a little deformed and they, uh, nothing happens. But if you put, uh, uh, if you change the temperature, like either in simulation, what was first done, to go to isotropic phase, and then you wait what will happen with the, your solution, you will see that beside this solution appear other, which are in, entangling two particles together by a single line, uh, more symmetric figure of eight or less symmetric or by two lines where one uh, they are orthogonal and the experiment uh, are really directly showing that this really happens and it happens also with certain probability when they do experiment because the energies of this system are different. The idea is now how this disclination line when you go uh, uh, go together with the two will somehow couple. And that's something what this question was also addressed on the DNA case yesterday. And here I would like to show what is here relevant, how these things couple together. So if you look at the loop, so you have a minus one half disclination line making simply a loop. And if you connect it back, it should fit together. So because it has a cross section of uh, this threefold uh, ribbon, and so that means the rib this ribbon can be twisted, as we heard here before or in the previous talk. So, but the twist is not arbitrary. This twist, if you go around, could be 120 or more, uh, depending left or right. Uh, uh, and this uh, thing can fit together that you can make a loop. Uh, and that uh, question is energy there, how much you must have. But because we have this complex situation, it's not only the twist present, things are more than twist. Because we have a three dimensional situation. So this situation is like that, that there are areas where two disclination lines are close, here, here. And this uh, here, 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 these are all these examples which I showed before, but more schematically. And here is this uh, kind of tetraedic space where the disclination lines comes with certain angle together. And if you look in details here, when two lines go close, uh, also direct or field in between is such that it really uh, fits well, uh, so it's directly orthogonal to this direction, uh, bit, uh, to the both lines in this. And what can one uh, see that e reconnecting lines just in these small points, you can reach all these different, uh, different structures by simply uh, visualizing this twisting of this tetrahedra in different way. What they do in experiment, or could do in experiment, is simply use a laser light which will manipulate these points. But uh, in principle this was not done, but one can, for instance, see if shining light with the right polarization direction, because this enforces the director can switch here such a reconnection. But what happens? In fact, you must first go to isotropic phase or nearly isotropic because otherwise it's an energy barrier in between. And then you, pr you have a present field uh, within the right direction in the right connection will happen. But if you do just uh, by heating and waiting, you will get different uh, reconnections depending on the uh, energetic difference. Now, uh, topological question of this uh, uh, linking together or different uh, disclination lines is important that one, as we heard before also, some of this, is that uh, we something should be conserved. As I said before, we need a twist, which would be right that you can make a loop. But beside the twist, we have some kind of three-dimensional right which, have, which is present in the systems because uh, it's not in plane, it's everything is in 3D. So both things are changing. So and what is important here that we have this, uh, we stress here self-linking number, 
uh, which is simply uh, some of a uh, right and twist. And it's a well, well known thing. But now, if one could connect these things more in a general form, uh, uh, for instance, uh, for a minus one half network, why just network of minus one? Because there we know how much you should twist. So these twists are 120 degrees, which are needed at least uh, to reconnect or zero or 240. And uh, one can put together that uh, if you have more, more uh, loops, which could perhaps link together or be knotted, uh, and if we have a total topological charge of this system, and we have then also, besides this self-linking number, also the linking, because two loops can link, because uh, you can have such an object, for instance. And then you put everything together, and what happens is that the sum of this self-linking and linking numbers plus number of loops uh, should be equal to the topological charge, but unfortunately in modulus 2, so it's no precise difference. So it could be z 2, 0, 2, minus 2, uh, but that's the limitation which is then here possible from topological consideration. So now if we uh, go and see this case which I showed before, so in this case, uh, one first observed that in most cases, when you even numerically analyze, twist is practically zero. But what is relevant is right. So if you have in this case here, and in this case, right is also zero, because they are mostly planar. Uh, while if you go to this uh, case, where you have this figure of eight, or figure of omega, right is non-zero, so it's plus minus two-third, depending on which direction it goes. And if you put these things together in our, uh, in our uh, formula, then it works now within this, that uh, it could be, uh, you get minus two, uh, and it fits in this. So that's a topological, simple, analysis of what is going on. Another side is also energy. If you look both of together, uh, what is the energy of this thing? So these energies here in micron site objects are high. So several thousands kT. So uh, thermally will not happen too much. So but uh, helping with the laser tweezers. For so if we go here, um, Further, yeah. Uh, so if we just simply uh, extend this, and uh, you can extend, and at some moment this breaks, or this one the same. So it's a miracle experiment, but uh, it's also uh, experimental evidence. So by laser tweezers they do the same thing. So they extend and then they uh, release and measure the force, effective force, and also energy in this way. And you see that the, these energies here are several thousand kT. But it's, what's interesting here, energies are practically linearly depending on distance. So it's a kind of force which is uh, string-like, so it's not the usual force. If you would have these two objects separated, then the force very much depends on distance. Why? Well, if they are connected, entangled uh, forces, uh, as long as they are connecting, practically constant, no? within and working well in the modeling and also in the experiment. Now let's go further to these uh, systems which can really link together into, um, into uh, a linked system or knotted system. And uh, here, uh, if uh, we started with two particles, you need more of them to somehow support a, a kind of knotting. Uh, so this way, perhaps, uh, uh, and the simple example is if you take four particles, and then uh, if you bring them together, for instance, this is experimental picture, when you analyze what this clination line does, you observe that there is a link behind. So, for instance, another case here is this uh, uh, experimental evidence of three objects, three already interlinked uh, 
uh, colloidal particles here and here, and then there is one free, and then this one has a Saturn ring, but this is less clear what it is, but it's a single line connecting all of them. Uh, uh, and now if we do uh, by laser tweezers a little helping, uh, so this was done in Mushevich lab a few years ago, and uh, if you do this with some patience and perhaps some feeling for the system, you create something what's uh, more complex. And now the, um, this object uh, really uh, reanalyzing then mathematically what does the declination, single declination line, you observe that out of this you get a three foil knot. So although it's a complex structure, uh, supported by the particles, you, it's in fact the knot, but this knot would disappear if you would remove particles. Particles are here stabilizing. We heard before for some, uh, yesterday about uh, um, metallic particles, uh, me metallic ions uh, which were helping to stabilize some of the knotting systems. So in some way, that's here, this uh, into, uh, similar. Okay, so uh, that's, in the, but the question is where to realize things in a larger scale. So one can uh, uh, realize this in a simple structure like a twisted cell. Why twisted cell? Because in a twisted cell, disclination lines are running in an appropriate way that you easily do reconnections on a broader system. So here is a 2D arrangement of particles interconnected by single lines running like that here or in this direction or in this direction. But I here mark these areas where reconnections are possible because here these two are close or here this is close to the one which runs down or this one is close to this. And if you reconnect these areas, you can and the question is how? Usually what they do, they just use laser tweezers. Uh, and here are an examples, for instance, of this a little bit a bigger system. Mark here, here, and here you see different recon uh, con local connections. And if you analyze the lines, here is a more complex this composite knot or three-point knot or prime link, all realized in the same uh, four by three particles, but here just simply doing reconnection in these points. Or schematically here down is shown how it looks. So these areas are reconnected. So this goes to this, this, or this. So, uh, and that works also in a numerical, a numerical example or obviously experimental one. So now if you play more with this, uh, more things could be done. So in this way, it was also connected, this description of this uh, 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 interconnected, uh, interlinked or knotted system by uh, description of graphs. But in all cases, you go from this, which looks complex to this uh, mathematical uh, description of, our, of simple knots. But as I said, without colloidal particles, knots are not stable in the system. And now if we go even more further, introducing our formalism of linking and self-linking, which I uh, was showing before. So one can uh, make a kind of uh, graph which showing if system is two, uh, like for two by four and then adding something or how you go to then uh, to this four by three system. And here you have, uh, if you look for solutions, you see that this small system four, uh, four by two can have uh, simple loops and have a trifold knot. And then uh, we have here a link and here uh, two other links and here another link and that's all what could be realized on such a small system. And then uh, one can also calculate this self-linking number and then the number of loops and so on and look and all satisfies our rules which I showed before. So if system is bigger, 
here we see much more possibilities. So, for instance, we have uh, here all kinds of different knots uh, from trefoil to higher, some also higher, and a lot of different links, which all should be possible on this uh, four by three system, which I showed before. And then uh, how you go from one to another, uh, behind it always this reconnection on some local position in our array. And here is a three by three system, which is smaller and have left only one uh, uh, trifold not possible uh, and not more. So if we go uh, and we see here that here then this uh, uh, links also possible. So this system is somehow uh, a 2D system where uh, this uh, interconnect, re reconnecting of disclination lines induced by laser twists in experiment or uh, numerically by a certain local simulation uh, is fitting everything together quite well. The question is what to do if this can go into three dimensions. So three-dimensional system so that you have an array of particles which are three-dimensional. So there, uh, there was not very, very few experiments in this direction uh, and perhaps one which uh, is already 15 years back was uh, from Clark's group where they had opal structure uh, of uh, this phase center, the distribution of uh, particles which have homotropic boundary collision on surface and then uh, infiltrated by uh, nematic. And the, uh, here we tried to make out of this also a kind of uh, understanding how one can describe the networks in such a system. And again, we were looking for minus one half disclination lines. And here, first one can observe that there are areas in between the pa uh, these uh, spherical particles, which are citrohedral, uh, and there are some which are uh, cubic-like. And now uh, the whole problem of uh, finding the possible structures here is simply analyze what can happen in this cubic object or in this citrate that we know from before. So if you put this together and then uh, analyze uh, what kind of lines of minus one half type can go and you observe that there are seven different states possible here uh, with this kind of disclination lines and in one case also a point defect is uh, together. And uh, that is then uh, that together or this you can have more possibilities because you can take rotations out of this, but it's in principle the same object. While this, our citrohedral system from before we know it has three different, three different uh, possibilities. So that means that here in this case, uh, putting everything together, uh, you can have an ansatz uh, uh, like for a numerical solving that you start with this kind of uh, distribution in these uh, voids and then you c calculate then further on by numerical relaxation something what is then given by uh, numerical procedure. So that was done for instance in some cases uh, and it is immediately seen that even if you have very few voids you have a lot of possible states. For instance, here is calculated for some case of four cubic voids and eight tetrahedral, you have 10 to 14 different realizations. So all differ in energy, some are higher, some are lower, but definitely there are many states. The question is if one could use this for any kind of memory, the question is addressing, I don't know. So uh, that's, now I am still okay. So if we go further uh, to the situation now, which uh, we had uh, simple spherical colloidal particles, and then they were in all cases practically homotropic on the surface. As I said, that's the clue for going toward the more complex networks. 
And then the question is if one goes to more complex particles. So there opens a lot of possible uh, realizations of uh, structures. So even, I mean, there were many trials, like uh, elongated particles or just fiber-like particles, and then faceted particles. Uh, and again, depending you do in 2D, uh, one can get some kind of quasi-crystalline here structures. And well-known uh, things also like genus particles, where genus means that you have at least two uh, different areas uh, with different boundary conditions, like homotropic or planar. And then again, such a particle would uh, create this particular uh, defect uh, uh, forms and also then the interaction between them. Uh, uh, very particular. Um, but here I just uh, put as an example something what was a few years ago uh, starting on some our uh, meeting or in fact workshop on knots. It was this uh, meeting in Santa Barbara uh, like a few years ago. Uh, and there was the idea that perhaps why not to have a knotted type of particle. So particle in the form of one knot, uh, torus knots here. And uh, what would happen in a pneumatic if you have perf perpendicular boundary conditions on such a particle, that you would get disclination lines which will simply uh, run around uh, all the particle. So in some way, both are knotted. So knot is physical and knot is in the disclination line in this case. So this is a kind of, was a kind of suggestion, and it's true that soon after that, it was also realized in the experimental in the lab of uh, Ivan Smaljuk in Boulder, they created such uh, knots of different kinds, simple, more complex, and simply by 3D printing, and you see the objects are, were on the scale of uh, 10 microns, so small, and uniform. So <laughs> that means now technology can do anything, but now then you cover this with certain agent which promotes the uh, uh, certain anchoring type, and then out of this, if you put this into a nematic phase, you will uh, be uh, getting structures. So in the case of uh, perpendicular anchoring, so homotropic, as I said, there are disclination lines running around, the, around this loop, and it's everything in some homogeneous field. And then uh, how this was tested, then this uh, complex uh, uh, fluorescence microscopies were used to really detect the director field and certainly uh, showing that it really works in the way what was uh, known. Less interesting is perhaps the situation when planar anchoring is because then only point defects appear uh, on the surfaces on different spots. And, uh, but uh, everything is according to what uh, happens. But here, an interesting question is here now if the uh, knot is Thin, so that means not not, but uh, our uh, our uh, this cylindrical object which is formed in the knot is thin compared to the scale. Then these uh, are very well separated these disclination lines, but if they come closer together, then th there are such crossings like mark here, and this really restructure. And that's something what is expected that should happen. Now here is an example of such uh, a numerical uh, what happens here, that simply if you fix the volume of this object, but simply uh, uh, changing the aspect ratio between diameter and length, and then at some moment you see that there was a transition in the structure, and then it was somehow cut it, and then if you go further and knot it completely tight, then the final object, for instance here, is more a sphere-like topologically with features on the surface, but it's no more has no more the topology of this knot. And then these areas which are marked here, there were these uh, 
this uh, restructuring, and perhaps in another presentation here, where also uh, it was used, this uh, Pontryagin tomb surfaces to show the area where things are. Uh, things? Uh, still okay? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, here I would like to mention that there, uh, beside these colloidal systems, which I showed two examples, so one based uh, more in details on spherical particles and the other on complex particles, which themselves already induce the knots, uh, uh, knots but then they are coupled with the this uh, notice of disclination lines, one can uh, ask if there is a possibility that the, that knots will uh, stay without support of colloidal systems. And here the idea was that probably that should happen perhaps in a cholesteric system. And some time ago, uh, we analyzed the cholesteric in a drop with planar boundary conditions and then some the nice uh, features appear well known so this is so called radial defect in uh, of power 2 in uh, and concentric uh, cholesteric layers so nothing very particular and uh, the reason why it's nothing particular what can be catched in such a sphere spherical confinement is that uh, when this clinician line comes toward the surface, then if structure is complex, can relax easy in some way, transform to a simpler, less energetic structure. Because of the boundary conditions, so the disclination line can touch the surface. But if you go to homotropic boundary conditions on a spherical, uh, again, for simplicity, this clinician line can come close to surface, but doesn't. <laughs> but doesn't touch. So that means uh, it cannot relax uh, if you have a, a complex structure in a simple way, except going over high energetic barriers. So this was the idea that perhaps here one can find knots in a crusade. And on this topic, there will be much more in the Simon Chopper's talk uh, on Friday, uh, which was, there was a change in the, in the order because he's coming on Friday, but that's already in the... So if I uh, say what was done here, so we tried to, uh, to use phenological description for uh, analyzing and presenting and understanding of uh, uh, complex pneumatic braids uh, in colloidal systems, mostly in colloidal systems, and starting with uh, two particles, going to more particles, seeing that knots and links can be supported, uh, and that uh, the role of particles is crucial here, and particularly boundary conditions on them. And then we have seen that in, with more complex particles, certainly you can uh, create even more complex structures. So then this story of knots should go further and see if one can see a support of knots, not only by particles, but for instance, colloidal, uh, cholesteric structure itself. So here I would like to stop. Thank you very much, sir.